Welcome to Ring Theory. Hobbits really are amazing creatures. As I've said before, you can learn all that there is to know about their ways in a month, and yet, after a hundred years, they can still surprise you at a pinch. And surprise us is what the Harfets have in Amazon's Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Or at least some of us anyway. But are they law accurate? Did Tolkien write about these proto-hobbits? In this video, I'll be taking a look at the features of the Harfets we've seen so far in the show, and decide whether or not they are law accurate to Tolkien's writings. There are four main discussion points on the Harfets so far that I will want to delve into. Firstly, they are called Harfets, not Hobbits, and are shown to be a Hobbit ancestor. Is this law accurate? Yes, it is. Tolkien actually described three different types of Hobbit ancestors. Firstly, the Fallowhides. They were the least common of the Hobbit ancestors, typically fairer in skin, slimmer, taller, and entirely without facial hair. They were lovers of trees and woodland, and they preferred hunting to farming. Fallowhides, on the whole, were where the more adventurous types of hobbits came from. As a result, they got along a lot better with elves and found themselves to be leaders of hobbit groups. The two brothers, Marcho and Blanco, who actually founded the Shire, were Fallowhides. Two hobbits who are suspected to be of Fallowhide descent that we know very well are Frodo and Bilbo. Secondly, the Stores or river folk. They had an average height compared to the three hobbit ancestors, but were considered to be physically the strongest. They sometimes had facial hair and were known for their love of riversides. They were talented watermen in that they swam, boated and fished. They even in some instances wore shoes, which were seen as very peculiar by other hobbits. This was most likely due to the muddy riversides. One hobbit who we know was a store was Smeagol who of course eventually turned into the creature Gollum. Thirdly and finally, the Harfoots. They are described to be the most common type of Hobbit ancestor, and also the shortest of the three. Like the Fallowhides, they were without facial hair, but with typically darker skin. Highlands or hillsides were their settlements of choice, as they had a deep love of nature. They were said to be friendly with dwarves after settling near the Misty Mountains, Perhaps will we see a hobbit dwarf friendship in the show? In contrast to the stores, they were said to be fearful of water and weak swimmers. The main hobbit we know who is suspected to be of half a heritage is our beloved Samwise Gamgee. So to answer my first question, yes, halfets are taken straight from the books. The second most popular discussion point is that they appear to have an almost magical ability to avoid being seen. Is this true in the book, and are there any examples? You don't have to look far in the Lord of the Rings books for evidence of this, as in the prologue of the Fellowship of the Ring, hobbits are described, they possessed from the first the art of disappearing swiftly and silently, when large folk whom they do not wish to meet come blundering by, and this art they have developed until men it may seem magical. At first glance, this is then not really a theme that seems to carry on throughout the book or the films. But upon reflection, there are actually several examples. The Ringwraith not seeing or hearing the hobbits despite being feet away from them in the Fellowship of the Ring. In general, it must have also taken an impressive feat of stealth to go unseen as long as they did by the Nazgul. Another small example is Sam sneaking into the Council of Elrond and nobody noticing. The more you think about it, Frodo and Sam must also benefit from this talent throughout their journey. One specific example is when they're in Athelion, with this quote from the Two Towers. Even a keen-eyed beast of the wild could scarcely have seen the hobbits, hooded in their grey cloaks, nor heard them walking as warily as the little people can, without the crack of a twig or the rustle of a leaf as they passed and vanished. Of course, they did have their elven cloaks on at this point, but it still must have contributed. You could also argue that Merry and Pippin would make use of this talent when escaping the Urukai in the Two Towers. Even if we go back to the Hobbit, Bilbo is able to evade trolls and goblins without the ring on his finger. So, in answer to the second discussion point, yes, their almost magical ability to hide is taken straight from the books, and definitely a worthy inclusion in the show. The third point, and one that seems to have surprised people the most, is that they seem almost brutal in leaving other half behind. We wait for you, except 
we don't. In the History of Middle-earth, which is a 12-volume compilation of Tolkien's Legendarium, edited by his son, Christopher, hobbits are described as In their unrecorded past, they must have been a primitive, indeed savage, people. I understand how this behaviour may seem somewhat unhobbity, but it does make sense for them to have to be cutthroat in order to stay alive. You have to consider that they are at the bottom of the Middle-earth food chain, and naturally may always take the lowest risk solution for the whole group rather than the individual. So again, yes, that one is taken directly from Tolkien Law, but I do understand the surprise. The fourth and final point, they have Irish accents. Yes, my microphone is still working, I just can't think of a justification for this. I did read an interview with Lenny Henry when he explained that they were going for a working, earthy type people, so went for an Irish dialect. I myself prefer the hearty, old English, country bumpkin type hobbits we saw in The Lord of the Rings and various other adaptions, including radio. It's not a huge issue, it's something I can get over, but I'd be lying if I said it was something I understood, and there certainly isn't anything at all in Tolkien's writings that they've taken as an inspiration. In summary, the name Harfoots is directly from Tolkien's writings, the same with their ability to avoid being seen, and the idea that they have cutthroat primitive communities. The only thing that has been created solely for the show is their accents, and obviously their stories. It's difficult to see where they'll be going until we know exactly who the stranger is. They certainly have a lot of creative freedom, as there is not much written at all about the Second Age Hobbit ancestors. I'm a little apprehensive that they may end up shoehorning them into a well-known plot point in the Second Age. They certainly have nothing to do with Sauron or Numenor, but I'm mainly intrigued to see how they fit in with the story moving forward. Thanks for watching Ring Theory. On this channel, I'll be focusing on anything and everything to do with The Lord of the Rings, Tolkien lore from the books, the original trilogy, and the new TV show. If you like the video and want to hear more, please drop me a like and hit the subscribe button.